Hello, welcome to another Coral Springs Improvement District's informational video short. Today we will be taking a look at potable water treatment. Here in the state of Florida there are a number of different ways to treat water that will be used for public consumption or potable water. Before a water plant can be built to produce potable water, a great deal needs to be understood about the water that is treated. Where does it come from? And what is in the water that makes it unfit to drink that requires treatment? Our source of water in Coral Springs Improvement District comes from a stable groundwater supply called the Biscayne Aquifer. The Biscayne Aquifer is the source of fresh water for all of Broward, Dade, and parts of Palm Beach counties. It is a relatively thin layer of semi-permeable coral rock, sand, and limestone that ranges from a few feet in thickness to its western side to about 240 feet closer to the southeast coast as it flows slowly towards the ocean. The Biscayne is replenished by rainfall that percolates down through the soil and rock into the aquifer. Because South Florida receives a great deal of rainfall each year, the Biscayne is a stable and constant supply of water. The ground that we all work and play on every day provides a natural filtration for these replenishing rainfalls. Unfortunately, our day-to-day -day activities also contribute unwanted contaminants to the water that are not so easily removed with simple filtration. As the water flows downward through the soil, sand, and rock layers, it also picks up dissolved minerals and salts that are naturally present in the soil and rock layers. With this thought in mind, a water plant must be designed that will provide the greatest level of protection for the public water supply. During a recent upgrade to the Coral Springs Improvement District's water plant, the engineering firm that was contracted to design a treatment process that would provide this level of protection selected a nanofiltration process. The nanofiltration process is very similar to reverse osmosis, but operates under much lower pressures. Nanofiltration removes most organic molecules, nearly all viruses, most of natural organic matter, and a range of salts. Nanofiltration removes divalent ions, which make water hard, so this process is often used to soften water. In contrast, after water passes through a reverse osmosis filter is essentially pure water. In addition to removing all organic molecules and viruses, reverse osmosis removes monovalent ions, which means that it desalinates the water. RO systems are typically used to treat salt or brackish waters. Now let's take you through the steps of the water treatment process. First, let's start with the wells. Here at the Coral Springs Improvement District, we currently have 11 production wells that all pump fresh water with low salt content. These wells vary in depth from 120 feet to 140 feet. Each well is equipped with a submersible pump and a drive motor that pumps an average of about 600 gallons per minute. The water flows into a series of raw water mains that carry the water to the front of the water treatment plant. The first step in treatment is the sand strainers. As the raw water arrives at the treatment plant, it flows into three pieces of equipment called sand strainers. Each sand strainer is equipped with six filter elements that filter out any particles that are 50 microns or larger. These are large particles, like sand and rocks, that might have gotten sucked up by the well pump. The next step is cartridge filtration. After leaving the sand strainers, the water flows towards the next phase of treatment called cartridge filtration. Prior to reaching the cartridge filters, the water is chemically conditioned to optimize treatment. There are three cartridge filter vessels. Each one of our three filter vessels contains 176 individual filter elements that filter out impurities that are 5 microns or larger in size. The next step in the filtration process, membrane filtration, in what's called membrane trains. The water flows from the cartridge filter vessels to the front of the membrane vessels, where large feed pumps increase the system pressures to about 95 psi. This water pressure provides the driving force necessary to overcome the natural osmotic pressure of the water and allow the membranes to start the nanofiltration process. As this process begins, the membrane elements filter out microscopic impurities to produce water with very little to almost no physical contaminants. These cartridge filters filter out contaminants down to around five to seven ten thousandths of a micron, which is equal to 0.5 to 0.7 nanometers. A nanometer is very small, the length of ten helium atoms put together in one row. 
Each membrane element measures 8 inches in diameter and 40 inches long. There are 7 elements packed into each vessel, and there are 50 vessels to make up one process train. That adds up to 350 elements per train. The water plant is equipped with 3 process trains that produce 2.25 million gallons per day. Combined, these three trains give us the production capacity of 6.75 million gallons per day. The water that has been filtered out during this process is commonly referred to as concentrate. The now filtered water that continues on in production is commonly referred to as permeate. The next step in the process is degasification. Since the membrane treatment process does not remove dissolved gases, the permeate water flows to the degasification process. The permeate water flows upward to the top of the two degasification towers. From the top of the towers, the water flows downward through a type of media element resembling wiffle balls. Air is blown upward through the cascading water to remove any volatile gases. Now along to the transfer pumps. The degassed water then flows into a transfer pump station. As the water is being pumped from the transfer pump station on its way to storage, it is chemically treated to provide for stabilization and disinfection. From there, it's pumped into one of three storage tanks. Combined, these three storage tanks give us the capacity of 5.75 million gallons of finished water on site. This finished water is then pumped out into our distribution system by one or more of our seven high-speed distribution pumps. For more on that, please refer to our water distribution video. I hope this video was helpful and informative. Thanks for watching.